I'm going to bring a message tonight that I don't think I've ever done in 50 some years of preaching. And uh, I'm going to preach on Veterans Day. This is Veterans Day Eve. Tomorrow is the official uh, Veterans Day, but they're already celebrating it this week. And so uh, I want to thank the Lord for Sandra getting home safe and praise the Lord for that. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, Veterans Day. And this is uh, November the 10th, but Veterans Day is on the 11th. And I want to give you some history because the public schools nowadays would rather teach you to teach races to hate one another. And they'd rather teach that we become a socialist, communist country, rather than teaching the reading, writing, and arithmetic. So it's going to fall back on some of us old-fashioned, fundamental Bible, King James Version preachers that are contend not only for the faith, but for the Constitution and for true American history. So I want to give you some data on the Veterans Day that you may not know. And I don't know if you were taught this in school or not. Some of you, maybe so, but the new age is not being taught. But in 1921, an unknown American soldier of the World War II, oh, excuse me, World War I, was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. And on the hillside overlooking the Potomac River and the city of Washington, D.C. And this began the focal point to reverence American veterans. Now, November the 11th was designated to give universal recognition and honor to the ending of World War I. It ended on November the 11th, 1918, at 11 o'clock a.m. Now, this day became known as Armistice Day, and some of you may remember it being called that in your younger days. Well, then Congress made a revolution not revolution, resolution, okay. resolution, I'm getting old. They made a resolution to observe November the 11th as Armistice Day every year, and they declared that in 1926. Then, 12 years later, it became a national holiday. It became a day for all veterans of all wars to be uh, honored who served America. Then on November the 11th, 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower, he signed a bill proclaiming November the 11th as Veterans Day. So on Memorial Day, 1958, unknown American soldiers buried on foreign soil were brought home, beginning with World War II veterans it included Korean War and Vietnam and others. Not all, but what they could, I guess. Then they were interned with the other unknown soldiers and were given a place of honor representing all American soldiers 
who gave their lives in all wars. An army honor guard was then posted to keep vigil day and night at that place. Now the freedoms we enjoy today in America, among the many freedoms we appreciate as Christians, the freedom to worship. Now, this freedom has been preserved by our veterans sacrifice and service, thank God. Now I wanna include, I wanna include another group today and what, that, and the, what it means to be a member of the army of God. I like to call them soldiers of the cross. Our freedoms today were paid for at a tremendous price. Men and women still today are putting their lives on the line in harm's way to keep us safe and free. I don't think we can ever thank them enough, including their fathers and mothers who have given and lost their sons and daughters. Then there are those special soldiers that are honored by the United States Congress with the Medal of Honor. I would I had the time to read you some of the history of Medal of Honor recipients. It is just totally amazing. We award them for their gallantry when they risk their lives far above and beyond the call of duty. The stories of heroism and unbelievable courage and sacrifice have been told over and over again, and we give thanks today to our veterans. I want to take you now to a small Middle Eastern country nearly 2,000 years ago where exactly the same thing has happen happened. A closer look will reveal a hero of heroes who surpasses all others. His name was Jesus, the son of God and the son of Joseph the carpenter. He was raised in the impoverished slums of Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. He grew up totally obedient unto his parents in very hard and difficult conditions. He began his public ministry following a Baptist baptism at the age of 30. He overcame victoriously Satan's attack to tempt him to sin and to serve Satan in the wilderness. The prophet Isaiah tells us that there was nothing about physically to attract us to him. He certainly did not look like our image of superheroes today. And more than any other, he was self-sacrificing in ways that we can never imagine. Jesus totally gave of himself. One of my favorite scriptures is, is, is uh, Philippians. Chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. And it says, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a serpent, servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself 
and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Jesus, like other great soldiers, continually put himself in harm's way to help others. He suffered pain and, 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 and great agony for the benefit of others. Another favorite scripture is Isaiah 53. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Let me just pick out a couple verses here. Verse 4 says, surely he's borne our griefs. He's carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Praise God. So we see the Lord suffered more than any man, the Bible said. He suffered more. He faced the terror of the cruel cross. Before the cross, he was prepared as an offering in the Gethsemane, where he prayed in agony and his sweat was as great drops of blood. And he prayed in total surrender, Father, not my will, but thine be done. And the Father's response is in Isaiah 53, 10 and 11. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief when he had made his soul an offering for sin. And he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquity. Bless the Lord. In Philippians 2, verse 8, being found the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And then in Romans chapter 3, verse 6, it says that the chapter 5, verse 6, I'm sorry, it said, for when we were yet sinners, we were yet without strength, helpless. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet preadventure for a good man, one would even dare to die. But God committed his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So when we get to Calvary, at the cross, all, all comparisons with other deaths and sacrifices fall short. Jesus is waging war with the most powerful, devastating enemy anyone ever faced. Jesus took the hill of Golgotha, and he won the ultimate victory. There was no flag erected there, but there was an old rugged cross stained with blood divine. There Jesus single-handedly defeated Satan and secured our souls. The victory over, over souls was fought. And the power of sin and Satan in our lives 
including ultimately death, was won. Believers, as good soldiers, have given their lives to service and to follow and fight for our Commander-in-Chief, Jesus the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians 10. It says, for though we walk in, verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's our battle. Ephesians chapter 6, the warfare chapter says that we are as soldiers to take on the whole armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, shot our feet with the gospel of peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, combined with a life of steady, consistent prayer to protect and to secure. One of my greatest illustrations of, is Hacksaw Ridge. I hope you saw the movie because it'd be well for you to watch it. Hacksaw Ridge depicts a soldier who shot his father drunk. His father was drunk. He took a gun and shot his father as a young boy. And that developed in him a phobia, a hatred, a disdain and contempt for guns. And he swore he would never take a gun again in his hands. And he would never kill anyone. He interpreted the commandment, thou shalt not kill, which is actually murder, but he interpreted all killing. So anyway, he after Pearl Harbor, he said, I have to do something. Call from. He, he said, I have to do something. And so he joined the army and he refused to take up a weapon and even learn how to shoot one. And he went through trial after trial. And finally, it was decided it was his constitutional right not to have a weapon. And so he was made a soldier in the medical corps. He said, I want to give myself to save lives, not to take them. Then they came into the battle in Okinawa on what they call Hacksaw Ridge. And they fought, it was a bloody battle. And the Japanese had snipers that was cutting the Americans to pieces. Well, they were up on a ridge and every soldier that was able fled even though many soldiers was crying who had been shot for help. But instead of helping them, they went back over the ridge and down to their encampment to safety. But one and only one soldier remained. And it was this private Desmond Doss. And Desmond Doss said he stayed in his foxhole until he prayed. And after he prayed, he got out of his foxhole and would begin going to the soldiers that were dying and crying. He began to pull them out and lower them with a rope over the ridge, one at a time. He'd get one over and go back and get another. His prayer kept, his prayer kept Lord, give me another one. 
Lord, give me one more, I think he said. Lord, give me one more. He kept lowering one soldier after another, uh, in danger of his life, over the cliff, down to the medical hospital they had set up. And he saved lives. He rescued that day 75 soldiers. He received the Medal of Honor from President Harry S. Truman. He said he gave his life to save lives and not to take them. Numerous others through the wars, known and unknown, have given themselves sacrificially of their lives to save others. But none, but none can compare to the Lord Jesus Christ and his supreme sacrifice. None can. None have experienced the pain, the suffering, the death that Jesus paid to redeem your and my lost soul. I encourage all of you tonight to remember with great gratitude our dear veterans and humbly say thank you. Thank them for their commitment to our country and its freedom. But most of all, we should not forget to honor the greatest veteran of all, the Lord Jesus. Jesus was a mighty warrior, more than a conqueror, a lion of the tribe of Israel, or Judah, I mean. And Paul described him as the leadership of a general in Ephesians 4, 7 through 10. He conquered everything that came up against him. He was the greatest veteran, the greatest military commander, and he will return one day leading his mighty army riding on a white horse, Revelation 19, 11 through 21. He's calling upon all the soldiers of the cross to repeat, report for duty. And one day, God's going to hold his own Veterans Day in heaven and give out his medals of honor, his rewards, and to all them that have been faithful soldiers for him. So what does Jesus ask of you today in closing? Number one, accept him as your Lord and Savior. Number two, surrender your life to him fully. Be baptized to show you're saved and join a true Bible preaching church. Fly the flag tomorrow. Wear red, white, and blue. God bless all you veterans. In Jesus' name. And last of all, I want to call roll on Central Baptist Church's veterans. Dwayne Sheffield, the Navy. Jimmy Bryan, the Navy. David Hahn, the Air Force. Gary Groves, the Air Force. Bob Freeman the Army, Omar De La Cruz, and Jesse Eisen, the Marines. Thank you for your service, your sacrifice, your dedication. Thank you for freedom. Thank you most of all for Jesus. Father, we pray you bless all our veterans, their wives, their children, their moms, their dads. Thank you for those, Lord, that have paid the price. Lord, whose blood ran into the ground that we might be free. Blessed be the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the lynches at the gates of wrath and sword. He has lost the faithful that he does his terrible sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory.
Good night.